thank you. Uh, so, let's go back. Yeah. So let's come back to the to the seal. As you see, we have many different shapes and many different materials, and it, it looks like a, a nice arrangement. But we try to put a little order in this, and we start with this one in the middle, which is not very impressive. But when you look at it, it it looks like a bead. But if you look at it closely, you will see this white surface, which is typical for the uh, surface treatment of dill moon seals. So I think this one is a uh, reworked dill moon seals that was uh, eroded and broken and reused as a bead and re-engraved re on the surface. And you can see examples from Phylaka which explain you uh, the, the process that I assume. So this is very important because there are not so many dill moon seals in the, um, in the UAE and Oman Peninsula and there is another one found very near from Sarouk. It's from Alashouche. Uh, it's been published by our colleagues of the Sanisera team. And, it's, and in Sarouk, it was found in the proper level in se second millennium with Wadisuk pottery. So it's very consistent. And this is the, the seal from Alashouche. And as I was saying, there are not so many uh, Dilmun seals in the region, and it's, a, it's really a big spot that we have two here. And then, if we come to the Iron Age seals, there are not also not so many, there were not so many in the region, and now we have suddenly almost 60 in the same site, which is quite amazing. And uh, as we said, I try to put a little order in this. Here they are arranged by shape. You can see you have uh, basically mainly pyramid seals, which is the typical uh, shape for Iron Age seals. And you can, I don't have time to give many details, but you can see there are a very regular sharp, sharp pyramid, which are, uh, no, sorry. These are uh, well done, very regular and sharp. And here you have uh, low, low pyramids which are more rounded and these are particularly irregular and, and rounded or eroded. And these are very tall ones, also quite irregular. And it's clear from this plate that the, the material, the color and, and the texture, the, the type of stone are not uh, linked to the type of, to the shape of the seal, uh, which is not exactly true for some other of the material. We have, uh, we have metal seals, which you can see are mainly uh, a type of, of uh, pendant seals. We have, uh, the cylinder seals are, are linked to two types of material, science and, and uh, soft tone, and I will speak of the others uh, later. Here you have ratio by material. You can see most of them are made of soft tone, and it, soft tone is used for almost all of the, all, all of the types of, of seals. And you can see a connection between shape and material on, only for two types of seal. It's the, the copper alloy uh, seals, which are pendants, and the frit and faience and big steatite, which are mainly sites we will, which we will see, seals which we will see are probably imported from abroad. And then uh, you see from the shape that mainly most of them are pyramids and the others are uh, Cylinder seals, pendants that I will detail later, uh, scarabs and, and uh, pyramid and seals uh, linked to the Egyptian influence. And we have two other, two other uh, types that I will show you later, which are very uh, unusual. So to the pyramids, we have blank seals 
this, this, these are, looks like beads, they were found together with beads, but the pyramid is so, so, so linked to the, to the seals that I think that these are blank seals which were not yet engraved. So we have two of them made of carnelian and one of them made of a white hard stone. But we don't have any uh, engraved example of this. Then we have uh, different types of, of pattern. We have geometric patterns which are abstract and, and there's not much to say about them except that there is one which is the same type found in Sohar in Oman. Then we have uh, a, a pattern which can be interpreted as a crescent and star. And again, we have different types and we, we have, this one is a bit different, but this seal on the right, which is from Bida bin Saud, just nearby, is maybe the same type of, of pattern. Not, not exactly the same, but... Then we have this pattern, which is, can be interpreted in different ways, but it, here we have an interesting phenomena. In the Bronze Age seals, uh, you can notice that almost no seal can, is similar to another. There is, they are always unique. And here in the, in the Iron Age seal, we start to see something, that we find similar seals. And we have one in Rumela, one in Bahrain. Uh, I have to thank Professor, uh, Dr. Pierre Lombard for allowing me to show the pictures from the seals from Bahrain because he's working on them and some of them are not published. Then this pattern also, it's very obvious. You have a beautiful one from Saruk. This one may be broken. And many more of them in Bahrain and variants of this pattern with more or less simplified. Then we have the animal design, and uh, there are many variants, and well, it would take too long to discuss about them because this pattern exists in the, since the beginning of Cliptic in the Middle East. But again, we have more examples in other sites in the region, Bida bin Saud again. And these are animals which can be maybe identified, a camel probably, a dog, and a scorpion, maybe. And the camel, we have another example in Omeila. Different, different style, but... And this is a pattern with a, an animal with a human being, and it's probably something to do with this one found in Bahrain. <laughs> Sorry. Then these uh, animal and, and human patterns are can most surely be linked to the Mesopotamian influence, because you can recognize these monsters with roaring that you find in the uh, Assyro-Babylonian iconography. And this one, sorry. This one is, is a uh, winged griffin. And it's interesting here to see that maybe this one is, might be a not, not well done version of, of something like this one, which was maybe done by somebody who did not understand the original uh, image. And the cylinder seal that the only, the cylinder seals that we have in Saruk are always linked to the same uh, Mesopotamian connection. We have only pseudo cuneiform design and this kind of thing that you, fi that you find in the, in the Mesopotamian iconography also. Then we have odd patterns which find parallel. This one in Bid Bid here. So our seal in Saruk is definitely, is, it's maybe late, late Bronze Age or second millennium. And this one, which is from Bid Bid in, in Oman, and it's maybe a similar design, kind of design. This one is definitely Iron Age, and this one is definitely Bronze Age from Vailaka, but I can't help seeing a connection in the, in the, in the picture. So there may be a, a, a continuity in the, in, in the themes and the iconography. Then this one is odd, and 
but we start to understand if we look at this one, which is from Phylaka and, and shows, we can understand here it's a human face with the eyes and eyebrows and, and the, the two lines for, for the face. And we have the foot pattern, which is very present in the iconography in Saru. And this pattern is also uh, very visible in other sites like Telabrak here in the UAE and Hilly. I don't have a picture for this, for this uh, item, but it's a small pendant uh, made of representing a foot. It's made of soft stone also. And in Tepeyaya in Iran, we have also, uh, and other sites actually, but it's just an example, we have the iconography of the foot. And the foot is also represented as pendants in, in stone and in copper. And this leads us to the, to the uh, copper me metal uh, seals, which are really a different type, as you can see. It's, it's more figurative, and, and the, the geometric design is, is really odd compared to all the others. It's, it's re really something special. The last one that you can see here was found three days ago, so we don't have a good picture. It was, it's really the photo made on the site. We didn't have time. And then we have uh, these uh, compar comparisons possible in Rumeila, in Bida bin Saud, and in Salud, in Oman. Then we have something really new. Uh, this site also discovered a few days ago. The, sh the shape is really strange, but if you dig into the archive, you find this published by Pierre Lombard from Romeila. We have only this, this drawing, but it's clearly, if you, you can uh, put the two uh, on top of each other, it's really same measurements and same, same size, same, uh, same uh, shape. And the find of the day is so, again, <laughs> something very special because it looks like a Dimulsin, but it's not exactly a Dimulsin. You can see the, the, the two lines which are here are, are fringed on, on the sides. And the pattern uh, on the obverse is, is indeed very unusual for a uh, Dimulsin. And it, although it's very small, you can see they are all to the same scale. This one is very small, but it fits quite well with a series of seals that I've started to identify. Actually, uh, Dan Potts first identified this one as, as very unusual and uh, in the 90s as maybe a kind of imitation of Dilmun seals. And at that time, it was unique. But now we start to find more from Oman and from the UAE and even from Wailaka. So there may be something here with this kind of Dilmun seals which have no, no disc, just a dome and no disc underneath. And somewhere in the design always arranged with small fringed lines and small triangle wavy lines. Uh, there is a great variety, but I think there is something that starts to show. And that's... Oh, yeah. Sorry. And, uh, and last thing, just, just one minute, I give uh, the, the ask Dr. Mansour again to speak because yeah. that's his field. These are Egyptian seals. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, as Helen said, uh, you know, the, this uh, collection of the uh, ancient Egyptian seals uh, is very strange for us. Uh, how did they arrive uh, to Sarug al Hadid? Uh, uh, are these seals, uh, or were these seals coming indirect from Egypt? Uh, were they uh, reproduced in some places and uh, come by trade to Saruga Hadid? What is the most important thing in this is just three seals. This one, this one has a hieroglyphic uh, writing in order for the god Amun Re. And this one for uh, uh, the uh, king Tutmosis III. And this one also is a representation for the, uh, the war god in ancient Egypt, Muntu. But I'll stop here uh, uh, by this one, Tutmosis III. Uh, it's, you know, uh, we have a text 
the Egyptologists is stopped uh, by this text in the annals of this king uh, in the uh, 33 uh, years of his reign. He uh, wrote uh, in, the, in his annals in the walls of the Temple of Karnak this strange uh, sentence. Uh, he wrote that after his majesty returned back to the, to the land of Egypt, he uh, uh, received uh, uh, messengers from uh, Genepteo, and they brought to him their presents from Antio, which means frankincense, and Caillou, which means gum. And then two products, they are missed in the uh, text. This name, Genepteo, mentioned only two times in ancient Egypt. Two from the reign of this king, and Ramses II uh, uh, repeated this name in the walls of the temple of Abydos. Uh, Dr. Saleh, in 1972, when he was working in Saudi Arabia, tried to uh, interpret this text, and he said that maybe Genepteo, this name came uh, from uh, 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 the word uh, in the, uh, in, uh, which means Genepti. And Genepti uh, means in the Semitic uh, language, the Southerners. So maybe Tutmosis III met a delegation from South Arabia, that's what he mentioned in 1972, and these people uh, give him the uh, frankincense and the gum. But also, this Genepti, if you look to the name, the ancient Egyptians always, when they uh, uh, wrote uh, a name of a city or a town, they put demonstrative as a circle behind the name. But here they put rulers, which means they were tribes. They were not uh, a big city, but they were tribes. But also, it, uh, the question raised again, was there a relation between ancient Egypt and Sarug al-Hadid? I think there is a big argument about this. Maybe these seals came from Oman. Oman was uh, had a relationship, the coast of Oman, with ancient Egypt since the Old Kingdom. They were, the ancient Egyptians were imported frankincense from the coast of Oman and also from Bont. But, you know, maybe the seals was transported to, uh, uh, to Sarug al-Hadid from other places, but it doesn't mean that there was a relation uh, clear between Egypt and Sarug al-Hadid in the Iron Age uh, 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 period. Before we finish, I want to thank my colleagues from Dubai Municipality who are really doing a great job with us since uh, uh, four years now, first of all, they can stand up Hassan Zain and Hani, and the three, the, uh, four dynamic girls, Mariam Al-Hamar, Mariam Swedi, and Manal Al-Misfri, and Jawahar Al-Ali. Both of them from different Emirates, uh, Jawahar from Umm al Manal from Dubai, Mariam Al-Hamar from Ras Al-Khaimah, and Mariam Suedi from Milan. Thank you very much, and thanks a lot.